How's it going guys? I'm Hunter with AM Electronics and today we're going to go over the quick start guide and how to get your CD7 dash set up. So step one of setting up your dash is going to be downloading the dash design software. Software is downloadable from the AEM website. You can check the link in the description below that'll take you directly to it. So after you download dash design 2, you're going to want to open it up and open a new setup. Now the setup you open up is going to need to be respective for your application. In this case, we'll demo a setup for an AEM Infinity ECU and go from there. Keep in mind, the steps are going to be the same regardless of the ECU you have. So you can just follow along. And then also remember that there is a help tab at the top where there is notes on respective applications. Um, go ahead and you can just search in the, uh, in the help file right there and get the instructions for your specific ECU. For example, the Haltech Platinum Pro plug and play, we have instructions for in the help file, along with a number of other third-party applications. So we can list and scroll through them right here. Now, once you have Dash Design open, first thing you're going to want to do is go to File and navigate through the folders to open up a new setup. So we can go to File, Open Setup, and by default, all the files are going to be saved in your My Documents folder under AEM, Dash Design, Setups, and then there's going to be App Specific or Generic. So the App Specific files, those are the files that are set up for specific applications. They're the ones we've gone through and configured. So all you need to do is open that file, load it to your dash, and you're good to go. Then there's other files that are generic. These are files where just the screens and a couple of the items are configured, which you'll need to then load your CAN data into, and we'll go over that in just a minute. Like I said before, for your app-specific files, select the appropriate file for the ECU or modules that you're using. You can open that up, load it to the display. You'll just want to confirm that the ECU is wired to the correct port on the CD7 dash or CD5. The dash has two CAN inputs. Port 1 is going to be on pins 3 and 4, and then port 2 is going to be on pins 5 and 6. So depending on what you're using, the CAN may be by default configured to a different port on the dash. And note that can be easily changed um, just by switching the two wires on the back of the dash, depending on what you're using. To configure a generic setup, there's a couple steps. First, we would need to open the generic file. We'll need to navigate to the CAN tab, and we'll need to make sure that we're configuring the port that our ECU is wired to. In this case, we're on port 1, and the baud rate set to 500k. And then we'll go down, import CAN DBC, and we'll import the CAN for the Infinity ECU. Now, on the dash, you'll see after the import can is selected, a bunch of channels will pop up. You can go through and manually click which channels you want to use, or you can simply select all of them, press OK. Once the can data is imported, then you can go over to the channels tab. Note, these are the, all the channels that can be assigned to different values on the dash. Then you'll want to go to your screens tab and then configure that each of the each of the values on the screen has an input. So you can go through, click on them. A lot of these will auto-populate by default, but you want to go through and just confirm that every item on the screen has an input assigned. So you go through, miles per hour is configured, RPM is configured, Let's see AFR is configured there. Now note the gauge structure on the side here. Because the air-fuel ratio needle is above the boost needle, I need to go through and see where that dynamic needle is in the, in the hierarchy here so that I can click on it. It's right here. Dynamic needle already pre-configured for the intake air manifold pressure. Do the same with these items here for coolant temp, oil pressure, um, and you'll complete this, you know, just double checking that everything has an input. If something doesn't have an input, then when you load it to the dash, there just won't be a value there. It'll be blank. So after that's done, file, upload to the display. Good to go. Once the file's uploaded to the display, then you can go through and start configuring your warnings, your alarms, your shift lights, setting up any track mapping or performance timers. And we'll put a link right here to our uh, playlist, which has all of our tech videos showing you how to do and configure each of those things. Another feature that we want to highlight here real quick is the ability to import screens. This feature allows you to take a screen 
from a different file and import it into the layout that you're building. And you can do that really simply just by going to the top of the software, clicking Screens, Import Screen, and then it'll load all of the files, all of the screens from the folder that you're looking at, and then you can import those one by one. So if there's a certain screen you want to use from a different layout, you can use that feature um, to create a custom setup just for you. So we can do that here, Screen 1. Okay, screen one will be overwritten, yes, and there it is. Imported, good to go. Once again, we'll confirm that all the items are configured, uploaded to the display. Okay, now we're gonna jump into a bit of troubleshooting. Obviously, with any setup, electrical systems, wiring, um, there's a potential for errors to occur. So we wanna jump into some of the more common things we see on either the dash not booting up or the CAN data not being displayed. So we'll go through a couple of those things right now. As you can see here, the dash is currently not powered up. I have my trusty multimeter right here. Easy thing to do, dash isn't powering up. First thing we wanna do, go ahead and set our multimeter to measure voltage. And we'll get into the connector on the back here and we're gonna confirm and see if we have 12 volts. So we can go ahead and pull this connector out. These DTM connectors are pretty awesome. With a pair of needle nose pliers, you can go ahead and pull this clip out, just like that. And then our power wires are going to be pins one and two. So pin one should be 12 volts and pin two should be ground. So we'll just measure these real quick. Sitting right at a Right at 12 volts, okay. Common thing we see, connector just wasn't pushed in enough. So we'll go ahead and cap that back up. Plug it in the dash, make sure you hear the click. And the dash should power up. Another thing to confirm, um, as you see the dash is now powered up, but I believe there's no CAN data coming through. Um, all the gauges have stopped moving. You know, we need to figure out why that's happening. What I like to do is I'll load up a, uh, a new layout and I'll add an extra value. So in this case, on page three, we added the channel for CAN1 status. CAN1 status is a diagnostic channel built into the software that you can add to a layout that tells you what's going on with that CAN channel, whether it's okay, disconnected, or in some sort of an error. So just jump over to page three right now, right there. And we have CAN1 status right there in yellow. Um, and at this point, CAN1 status should say disconnected. A couple reasons why CAN1 status could say disconnected could be that the connection between the dash and the ECU is uh, something's up with it. Whether the wires aren't connected or CAN plus is connected to CAN minus where you just need to flip the wires or one of the crimps um, on the DTM isn't making full contact. So you just wanna confirm that. When in doubt, you know, you set your multimeter to, uh, to a continuity test and beep it out. Go to each end of the system and make sure that, you know, on CAN plus you have contact and then on CAN minus as well, just to confirm. Then you can look back at the dash and just flip the wires too. Easy thing to check. Make sure that CAN plus and minus aren't flipped. So in this case, CAN one is just disconnected. So we'll go ahead and reconnect that right now. Repin it back in. So we just rebooted the dash after fixing our CAN bus error in the wiring. So now we can see that our CAN1 status on the dash says OK. So that means our wiring's good, it's going to the correct place on the dash, um, and the data is being received. If you note, it looks like that there's two values not showing up. The boost and the oil pressure value, um, neither of them have values, but in our layout, um, they both have zeros, so there should be something there. So the first thing when that happens that you want to do is jump back into your layout or your setup file in dash design and confirm that there's an input selected on that value. So if we look at this real quick, we could tell that boost, there's no input defined, and then for oil pressure, there's no input defined either. So we'll just go through, quickly configure those. Boost, oil pressure, file, save setup, Connect via USB, F7 to upload to the display. Also note that there's a, uh, there is a checkbox here to make the setup downloadable from the dash. So if in the future you lose your laptop or you're working on a different laptop, you can connect to the dash and then download the setup out of it. So we'll go ahead and upload this to the display. So now we can unplug it and check it out. So that error was happening on page three, so we'll wait for the dash to boot up 
and then we'll jump over to page three. And then now you can see can one status is okay, and then both of the inputs are where they need to be. We can also briefly touch on um, a couple of the other things that that can one status could say. It can either say can one, okay, can one disconnected, or I've also seen it say can one error. Now can one error has come up in times where everything's wired correctly, but there isn't the correct termination on the bus. Um, at each of the ends of the CAN bus network, depending on the length, um, you're required to have a 120 ohm resistor bridging between CAN high and CAN low. Now in a lot of systems like the Infinity ECU, that's built in, as well as the dash, it has a built in software selectable terminating resistor. Um, so you'll just wanna confirm that whatever device you're using has that on its end and then you have it selected in the dash, depending on which components you're using, of course. So that's about it. At this point, your dash should be up and running. Check out the link right here for more tutorials on how to set up your alarms, your performance timers, or going through the data. Thank you guys for watching. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and turn the bell on so you can get alerted for when we post videos every Thursday.